everybody welcome back today we will be learning how to do some basic thread painting using three different colors today we are using a dark medium and light shade now i generally prefer to begin with my darkest shade and blend the lighter colors into the dark i think it helps give a more seamless look on the first go around while also leaving a little more room in case we need to go back and blend our seam a second time so to begin we are going to cut off about 10 to 12 inches of floss I don't use uh, use links floss much longer than that because you run the risk of tangling your thread as you work. So we're gonna just do about 10 to 12 and then to separate, because we're only gonna use one strand, we're going to pinch off one of the threads out of the six and gently pull up and away. And that is gonna separate our working thread. Next, I'm going to pick the needle I'm going to use for the project. Uh, when I thread paint, I like thinner needles. Um, I prefer quilting needles, uh, but there are plenty of thin embroidery needles if you have trouble threading uh, and you want to use a larger eye. Personally, I'm okay with a smaller eye, so this is the one I'm going to use. So I'm going to thread my needle using one of the strands. And the very end of the thread I'm going to bring back towards the top of the needle. I'm going to use my thumb to pinch that tail in place and wrap some coils around the needle. I'm going to use my opposite hand to pinch the coils as I pull the needle up and through and that's going to bring the coils down creating a knot. And next, I have to decide where I want each color to be. So I'm going to use a Frixon heat erasable pen to give myself an idea of where I want each color section to be. These pens are great for thread painting. The lines can be removed with a hairdryer or you can use a water soluble pen uh, to do the step if you aren't a fan of the heat erasable. I know sometimes they get a bad rep because their lines can reappear in cold temperatures, but as long as you aren't putting your embroidery in the freezer, it generally is not a problem. I just like to use them to get a basic idea of where I'm going to have things go because when you get into more complicated patterns, it can be easy uh, to get lost. So I'm only using three tones, so I'm going to go ahead and separate. I'm even going to write down that this is my darkest. This is my mid-tone, and this is my lightest section. And I'm going to repeat that on the other side as well. Dark, medium, light. That intersection I'm going to work on later. For now, we're just going to focus on the three main thread painting colors. Now we are all set up. I'm going to begin by choosing which direction I want my stitches to go. This is an important step to think about because in thread painting, you don't just get depth from your color shades, but also the direction that your stitches go. This means we can get a lot of extra volume by choosing a direction that makes sense for our pattern. So for this piece, I think I'll get the movement I'm looking for by search, uh, stitching vertically. So I will begin my bottom row stitches going upwards. I'm making single stitches, kind of like satin stitch, but I'm also staggering the length of each stitch. I'm doing this because when we work with our next tone, we will be stitching into that seam to blend our two colors together. This is what's going to create a nice gradient as opposed to a harsh color change. Now, generally speaking, the more staggered your stitches are, the easier time you'll have blending the colors together. You want to have enough space between the colors uh, to create a nice gradient. So I'll speed this up a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and continue using long short stitch to fill in this entire section with our darkest color. And then once you reach the end of that length of floss, you're going to want to turn your work over so the back is facing you. You're going to run your needle underneath some of the stitches on the back. And I like to do that in a couple different sections just to really secure things and pull your needle through. And then you can just trim off that little bit of excess tail and your stitches will be secured. So we'll go ahead and start our next area, finish this. And 
Now that I've reached this little section in the corner, I think I'm going to begin changing my floss direction to be a little bit more on an angle so I get the illusion of a cone shape. I want it to have a lot of volume, so changing the direction of stitches is going to help me achieve that. So I'm going to go ahead and use Satin Stitch to fill this in until I get to this little bit of an edge near the center of the cookie. And that's where I'll go ahead and start staggering again because that's where I'll begin blending when the time comes. All right, and I am really happy with how that turned out. As you can see, I've got a really nice staggered edge. So I think I'm ready to work on my mid-tone shade. For the mid-tone, I'm going to be starting in the middle of the fortune cookie abouts, and I'm going to be bringing that lighter shade down into the darker shade. As you can see, I'm pulling my needle pretty far down. I want there to be a decent amount of overlap between the two colors because that's what's going to create our nice gradient. So I'm going to pull up, make sure to keep the edge staggered on both sides, run my needle down a little bit and try to get it in between two of the darker strands. If you do that, your stitches are going to lay a lot more flush and it's going to be a smoother gradient. I'm going to go ahead and turn the work as well. So just so you can get another angle at just how far down into the dark section I'm actually putting the needle. I'm bringing the thread pretty far down, doing my best to keep it in between the other two strands of floss from the darker shade. And since this is such a large area, we're going to actually blend the same color into itself to fill it in. That's why we want to keep that staggered edge. But here is our finished product on the one side. I'm really happy with it. I don't think I need to go back in and blend anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the lightest color. So we're going to go to the next section, thread our needle. And then as you can see, we're kind of working on a different angle now. The pattern, the way the cookie goes is almost like it's angled a little bit up and to the right. And so we're going to follow that line to give us more of that cone shape that we're looking for. Give it a little bit more uh, depth to the pattern. We're going to be pulling our thread through, keeping that edge staggered on both sides. Because again, this is a relatively large section, so we're not going to be able to do it um, with just one row. We're going to need to fill in more than that. So we're going to continue to fill in this section with the lightest shade, working at that angle, following the edge of the cookie. And if we need to, what we'll just do is go back along the seam with a slightly different angle, just to soften up that transition if it's too harsh. Now, as I get to the edge of the cookie, I'm actually going to follow the angle of the pattern just to get a clear distinction between the front and the back of the cookie. And I'm going to go ahead and soften up that angle between the color change as well, just to give it a little bit more of a softer transition. I'm just doing um, the lighter color, but at a kind of in between angle between the original stitches of that and the mid tone. And I am very happy with how that ended up turning out. So I'm going to move on to the middle of the cookie. I'm going to use a different shade and similarly, like with the edge of the cookie, I'm going to work in a different angle. For this section, I'm going to actually use horizontal stitches in this darker color because I want to make sure that there's a very clear distinction that this is the inside of the cookie. If I use this darker color but go in the same direction, it still might get lost because the tones are so similar. So I'm going to use the direction of the thread to my benefit. I'm going to do the same thing along the edge of the cookie to make sure that there's a clear edge. I'm just going to follow the angle of the pattern and that's how I'm going to fill in the edge. 
once we're done there, I'm going to take a minute just to make sure I don't feel I need to revisit any areas, make sure I don't need to soften up any edges. But honestly, I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next section. So I hope you realize now you don't need a ton of colors to make a really effective thread painting. You just need to be cognizant of the direction that your stitches are flowing. You need to make sure that you have enough of a staggered edge that you can blend your colors efficiently and you just got to be patient. If an area needs to be revisited, just revisit it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot and if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.